The following is a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated. Coming up next on Amazing Facts Presents... God said you will die. The devil said no you won't. The tragedy is that there are many Christian leaders that are repeating the lie of the devil. For over 40 years, Amazing Facts has been dedicated to sharing God's Word through media. This program features highlights from some of our best television broadcasts. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. Today's presentation is an excerpt from the Prophecy Code video series. Now, when we think of fire and brimstone, what subject, what Bible subject pops into your mind? Hell. And that's our subject today. Hellfire, which is exactly the same as the lake of fire that you find in Revelation. Some have tried to separate the two. It's the same subject that we're going to study. The Bible has a lot to say, not only about the reward of heaven, and we have a study coming on the New Jerusalem. You're going to love that one. But we also have a study on something that is in Revelation. It is in prophecy, Old and New Testament, dealing with the punishment of the wicked. It's a sobering truth we need to be aware of, and God wants us to know to avoid it, but he also wants us to know the way he is dealing with sinners is a loving way. The love of God is revealed in this subject. Let's get right into our study. How many lost souls are being punished in hell today, according to the Bible? Answer, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation, godly are delivered, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Where are the unjust? Reserved. Any of you ever made a reservation? It's something that is held for you. You don't want this reservation. <laughs> but the, the unjust are, they're being reserved. They're being held for this day of punishment. And again, John 12, 48. The word that I have spoken, Jesus said, will judge them in the last day. We read a lot about that in John chapter 6 today, right? When are they going to be punished, rewarded, judged? The last day. How many people are burning in hell now? <coughs> Nobody. Oh, some of you are getting riled up. All You said, Pastor Doug, you tell me you don't believe in hellfire? I do believe in hellfire if that makes you happy. I do. I believe the wicked are going to burn. That, for our Baptist friends out there, you wanted to hear that. My dad was a Baptist. Oh, first time I was baptized in the mountains. Remember that subject? Baptist. So I understand. And this is a very integral part. I do believe in it. But nobody's burning yet, according to the Bible, because the Lord says they are reserved. Haven't been judged yet. Resurrection hasn't taken place. Even the resurrection of damnation hasn't taken place yet. When will sinners, according to the Bible, be cast into hellfire? How many of you remember the parable Jesus told about the farmer who had an enemy that spread weeds, tares, in his wheat? And in that parable... They're told to first gather together the tares, bind them in bundles, and burn them. Matthew 13, verse 40 is where you find this. And then later when Jesus explains this parable, he says in um, Matthew 13, verse 40 to 42, So shall it be in the end of the world. When? The end of the world. The, the, world, the Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they will gather together them that do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. They're being cast into hellfire, lake of fire, furnace of fire. You can call it what you want. When? The end of the world is when they're going to be gathered and punishment is meted out. So how many are burning in hell now? Nobody's burning in hell now. Where are sinners who have died now if they're not burning? A lot of scripture. The Bible tells us, John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. <clears throat> the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves will hear his voice. It's coming. And they'll come forth. The wicked is reserved, Job 21, verse 30. The wicked is reserved unto the day of destruction. He's being reserved, just like Peter said. And again, yet he shall be brought to the grave. He'll remain in the tomb. Until when? The day of judgment. He's reserved in the tomb until the day of judgment. If that's clear, please say amen. amen. What is the end result of sin? The Bible tells us penalty for sin is death. James 1.15 bears that out. Sin, when it is finished, brings forth what? How many know this one? John 3.16. Could you say this by heart? 
For God so loves the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, this is something that some people, they have an aha experience right about now. There are two destinies for everybody. There's two roads, there's two choices, there's two masters, life and death, good and evil, Christ and the devil, either eternal life or perish. It is not eternal life in heaven and eternal life in the fire. Life and death is what he's offering us. Are the wicked punished in hellfire? Yes. How long? Well, we'll get to that in just a minute. Again, Romans chapter 6. What does Paul tell us? The wages of sin is what? Everlasting life in the fire. Is that what it says? The wages of sin are death. But the gift of God is everlasting life. The gift doesn't go to everybody. It's those who everlasting life is for everybody. The first lie that the devil told Eve was what? You won't really die. You'll live forever in hell or you'll live forever in heaven, but you're immortal. We looked at all the verses this morning dealing with immortality. Did we find one? I asked the whole audience, no offers, right? Is there a single verse in the Bible that says we have immortality now? Not one. The God said you will die. The devil said no, you won't. The tragedy is that there are many Christian leaders that are repeating the lie of the devil. If the idea that the penalty for sin is everlasting torment. Did Jesus die on the cross for our sins? If the penalty for sin is to burn forever and ever and ever and ever, Jesus didn't pay our penalty. The penalty for sin is death. Did he die? He paid our penalty. The whole idea that the penalty for sin is eternal torment, Jesus did not take our penalty. And then we're all in trouble. But he did die. It's like with Daniel. The penalty for disobeying the king's command was death. He put him in the lion's den. He spent one night. He took him out. He said, I've kept the law. The law has been satisfied. And then he threw in Daniel's enemies. And the lions ate them. Daniel came back out alive. He didn't stay in forever. What will happen to the wicked in hellfire? The Bible tells us in Psalms 37, verse 10, and verse 20, For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. But the wicked shall perish into smoke. They will consume away. Going to burn up. For behold, Malachi 4, you know this, verse 1. For behold, the day comes that will burn as an oven, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. How many of you have done farming before? You know what stubble is? You know, after you harvest the rice, they've got this uh, little stalks that looks like it's been mowed off. It's called stubble. And you burn it, it just smolders, and that's all that's left. It'll be stubble. It'll leave them neither root nor branch. Malachi chapter 4. The day that comes will burn them. Say this with me. It's talking about the wicked. The day that comes will burn them up. What does it say? They can be burned up. It's all gone. You got to raise your voice when you say that. <laughs> you know, I'm showing you a picture there on the screen. Anyone know where that's from? Pompeii. I've been there. At the foot of Mount Vesuvius. It used to be much taller. Of course, so did Mount St. Helens. There was this uh, Roman Las Vegas. It was a, a very lush seaport town for people to vacation. And the towns of Pompeii and Herculeum uh, were devastated during an earthquake in about 68 uh, B.C. But the mountain finally blew its lid in 78 B.C. What many people don't know, and of course uh, at least 2,000 bodies they found so far, and they haven't finished excavating it yet, but uh, some people were found, the gladiators still chained up, and a lot of Roman soldiers lost their lives during that time. A little amazing fact a lot of people don't know. The legion of soldiers that worked under the general Titus, who later became the emperor, that destroyed Jerusalem and sacked the temple in 70 AD, were at that time vacationing as a reward for their service. It took them years to move them around back then. They didn't have aircraft. And they perished. The soldiers that destroyed Jerusalem and the temple were there when it blew. Just interesting to think about. What else does the Bible say about the punishment of the wicked? But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars will have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. When and where and how will hellfire be kindled? Answer, 
Matthew, Jesus is speaking, chapter 13. So shall it be at the end of the world, the Son of Man shall cast them into a furnace of fire. Again, Revelation 20, verse 9. It says, they went up on the breadth of the earth. This is something we'll talk more about tomorrow night when we study the millennium of Revelation chapter 20, the devil being chained. They went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Doesn't that sound a little bit like what we read about Sodom and Gomorrah? Do you know the Bible writers tell us what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah is an example of what's going to happen in the last days and how God is going to deal with the wicked. And it goes on again, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 31. The righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Remember when Jesus said, the meek will inherit what? The way it is now or the earth made new. I'll create a new heaven and a new earth. The righteous are going to be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. So I don't know if you caught this. We just read three scriptures here that told about hellfire. Where is hell going to burn? On earth. More specifically, Washington, D.C. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? It, you know, the idea that, you know, uh, because it comes from Greek mythology again. You know, Hades lived in the underworld. And this idea that the devil is down yonder. And I remember walking out of the market one day. And uh, sometimes I just look for an excuse to go to the market so I can read as much of those tabloid covers as possible for entertainment. And I remember checking out of the market one day and it said, oil well drillers in Russia drill too deep. Demons escape from hell. <laughs> Any of you remember that one? <laughs> and there are preachers that still preach. Way down yonder somewhere, the devil's got his condo. There's his whole office, and he's got, the, he's got everything set up down there in these caverns. When the devil came to, in the book of Job chapter 1, when the devil came to the Lord, and the Lord said, where'd you come from? He didn't say, I came from a cavern down in hell, in the earth. Some, he said, I came from walking to and fro on, on the earth. The devil's business isn't down yonder, it's up here. He's on the earth. And that hellfire is going to rain down on the earth. God rains it down on the earth. On the earth they come past the camp of the saints, right? That's where it's going to happen. How big and how hot will hellfire be? The Bible tells us the day is coming that will burn as an oven. Oh, I'm sorry. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Now, some think that when the Lord comes as a thief, life's going to go on for another seven years. You know, this whole left-behind secret rapture scenario, they've got the Lord coming like a thief, and then life goes on for another seven years. What does the Bible say is going to happen after the Lord comes like a thief? The elements are going to melt with fervent heat. You know, they learned when the bomb, the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima that even rocks will burn. You get them hot enough. Second Peter chapter 3, the earth also and the works therein will be burned up. It's going to be burned up. So there'll be nothing left of the wicked. God's going to purify. Fire purifies. How long will the wicked suffer in the fire? Now some people think they're going to burn forever and ever. Jesus said, Revelation 22 verse 12, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. First thing, when do they get rewarded? When he comes. How do they get rewarded? According to what they deserve. Does everybody get the same reward? If everybody burns forever and ever, then it's really not fair that Cain, who killed one person, his brother, 5,000 years ago, would burn 5,000 years longer than Adolf Hitler. I'm assuming Hitler's lost. Is that okay with you? I don't want to judge him or anything. Someone's going to come up to me. And, but uh, would that be fair? No, of course not. And everyone's going to get rewarded according what his work shall be. And again, Matthew 16, 27. It says, um, and he'll reward every man according to his what? His works. We're saved by grace, but we're rewarded according to our works because your works will demonstrate whether or not you really are saved. That's why Jesus said, why do you say, Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Luke chapter 12, verse 47 and 48. 
that servant that knew his Lord's will and neither did according to um, his will shall be beaten with many stripes. In other words, if we know what God wants and we don't do it, we're punished more severely. He that didn't know his Lord's will and didn't perform it, he will be beaten with few stripes. Does that sound fair to you? That's what Jesus said. People are going to get according to what they deserve. Christ said, fear not him that kill the body, fear not them that kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Some people say, well, the soul is burned forever in hell. The body gets burned up. Have you heard that before? Yeah, that's true, Doug. The, the, the bodies all get burnt up, and God makes a new heaven and a new earth. But the souls burn forever. What did we learn about the souls today? Soul that sins will die. What does Jesus say about what happens to the soul in hell? Fear not them that kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. He goes on and says, fear them that destroy soul and body in hell. Will the fire ever go out? Bible says, Psalm 37, verse 10, for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, but the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be consumed. Into smoke they will consume away. Again, Isaiah 47, 14. Behold, the day shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. These are prophecies, and this is a prophecy code meeting. There'll not be a coal to warm at, nor a fire to sit before. No coal, no fire to go on out, right? And if you have any doubts, Jude tells us, even as Sodom and Gomorrah are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of what kind of fire? Eternal fire. Now, some people say, there you have it, Doug. The fire is eternal. It's going to burn forever and ever. Is that what it said? Are Sodom and Gomorrah still burning today? They were burnt with eternal fire, but they were burnt up. What it's saying, was Sodom and Gomorrah ever rebuilt? Oh, it's 4,000 years ago. You can go there today. It's still ashes. They were burnt with eternal fire. The results of the fire are eternal. It doesn't mean that they are still burning. They were cities, not people. I mean, the idea that God's going to burn cities forever and ever is even more absurd. But people seize upon a few misunderstood phrases, and they build a whole theology on that. They completely, they blind themselves to the bulk of evidence, and they focus in on what they want to believe. Now, there are a few difficult scriptures where it uses the word forever. The word that's used there in Greek is eon. Have you ever heard someone say, well, I haven't seen them in eons? Now, eon is an unspecified period of time. It doesn't have a start or a finish per se. And the reason God uses that word is because all the sinners burn different periods based on what they deserve. He couldn't give a specified period. There are other places in the Bible where you're going to find the word forever, and it obviously had an ending. You remember, for instance, when Jonah, and Jonah's time in the fish was compared to the hell that Jesus went through. And that, Jesus' quote is Matthew chapter 12. It says, Jonah prayed from the belly of the great fish, and he said, the earth with her bars was about me forever. He was in prison. How long? You think it felt like forever? You know, what Jonah went through is a good picture of the darkness and separation from God. Here he is in the bowels of this sea monster at the bottom of the ocean, and it's dark, and, and one day it occurred to me that if he was in there alive, maybe that fish had swallowed other things that were still squirming in there with him. Wouldn't that be awful? And then if you ever do any diving at night, you know, sometimes these fish flash bioluminescence, and all of a sudden a little flash octopus and a jellyfish, and oh, it must have been like hell in there, right? <laughs> so this is how he talks, and do you think it felt like forever? Three days and three nights? in the digestive system of a sea monster? But was it forever? The Bible says he was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Again, you can read in Exodus 21, a Hebrew could have a servant for seven years, and at, after that time he could go through a ritual where he would stay with his master, and it says he will serve him forever. How long would that be? Till he dies, right? When Hannah brought little Samuel to the temple, she said, I'm going to leave him here forever. How long was that? Till he died, the rest of his life. And again, it specifies later for as long as he lives. And so when it says that the wicked are going to be burnt forever, it means the word there, don't forget, it's going from Greek to English. It's eon. They're burnt up according to what they deserve until they die. They're punished. And they're burnt with not only um, everlasting fire, because will they ever live again? No second chances. It's also called 
unquenchable fire, and I'll get to that in just a minute. Forever and ever is a biblical expression, which means until the end of the age, not necessarily an infinite, unending length of time. You must read, read that phrase in its context, because after all, Martin Luther believed it, the father of the Reformation, as did William Tyndale, and a more modern scholar kind of turned the world up on his ear, John Stott who is a great scholar, he also believes that the Bible is very clear that the wicked will be burnt up in the lake of fire. Uh, Pentecostal, Edward Fudge wrote a book that kind of surprised everybody, and he said, if you're going to go by the Bible, there's no question the wicked are burnt up in the lake of fire. There's a lot of people out there that know this, and they're afraid to say anything because it's considered unpopular. Quick story. <clears throat> oh, it must be 25, 30 years ago. I was driving my little Mazda GLC Japanese car across Texas to the home where we were living at the time, and I saw Christmas Eve, car was broken down, and I pulled over to see if they needed any help, and the man said, I'm not sure what it is, the lights just started getting dim, and finally the car died, and I used to do mechanic work, and I said, sounds like your alternator, and we checked, battery was stone dead, it was, alternator wasn't putting anything out. So something very funny, he's driving this big old Texas Oldsmobile or something like that. I pulled his car several miles to our house with my Mazda GLC. <laughs> and it was Christmas Eve, couldn't get, I oh, took his alternator apart, it needed new brushes, you men know what I'm talking about. And couldn't do anything about it that night, invited him, his wife, two girls to stay the night with our family. And um, got to talking, he's a Baptist minister. So I wanted to study. We started talking about some of the differences of what we believe, and this subject came up. And as I shared with him what I've just shared with you, he became very nervous and looking a little edgy. And he said, Brother Doug, he said, I've seen these scriptures before, and I realize if you're going to go strictly by the Bible, that it is pretty clear that hell doesn't burn forever. But then he said, if I told my church members that, they wouldn't come to church anymore. And I said, brother, is that why they're coming? Fire insurance? <laughs> Trying to <laughs> stay out of hell? And you know, granted, the Bible does have some very sobering warnings about the lake of fire. And wanting to avoid it, that may be a starting point for anyone in the right mind, right? I mean, fear of destruction, we all, you know, that's why we don't grab rattlesnakes, right? It's self-preservation. It might be a starting point, but somewhere along the way, if the only reason you're going to church and serving God is you're trying to stay out of hell, should you ever arrive in heaven, you've lost your motivation. Along the way, we've got to learn to do it because we love the Lord and we know Him. And you know, the other reason this subject's important to me, before I learned the truth, I hated God. I wouldn't say that out loud, but in my heart of hearts, I thought, God is mean. He's going to torture these creatures who are all feeble and weak sinners, and he's going to torture them through endless ages for the sins of this brief lifetime. Why, he's a sadist. That's what I thought. When I learned the Bible truth on this subject, it was one of the most liberating subjects I had ever studied because it helped me see that God is just, and he's loving. He wants us to have life everlasting. He wants it so much that he was willing to die to provide the opportunity for you to live with him forever. He doesn't want you to suffer for your sins because he already suffered for them. What a waste for him to suffer for all your sins and you to suffer as well. He's appealing to you today, friends, to say, Lord, I want to accept what you've done in my behalf and live for you. And he'll put you at his right hand where there are pleasures forevermore. Is that your desire, friends? He's calling you today to come to the cross and accept that forgiveness, eternal life or perish. Those are our choices. Would you like to choose Jesus tonight, friends? Those who are watching, is that your prayer? Let's ask him once again. Father in heaven, dear Lord, we are so thankful that Jesus came and he suffered so intensely. He suffered for the, the misery and the guilt of all the sins in our lives, all the sins we ever have committed or could commit, all of all of humanity, and we can't comprehend that. We're poured upon Jesus. And Lord, we accept what he has done on our behalf. We want to embrace it, and then I pray that we'll be transformed by your love. Help us to be new creatures now, that we might have our new bodies when Jesus comes and live in that new earth. 
Lord, I pray you'll work miracles in the lives of each person who is listening and watching now. Help them to embrace the truth and be liberated by the truth because Jesus is the truth. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Stay tuned. Pastor Doug will be right back with this week's special free offer. World events have never been more unstable than today. Terrorism, disasters, bizarre weather. What does the Bible reveal about future events? Learn the amazing answer in this stunning 43-minute documentary entitled The Final Events of Bible Prophecy. During this special broadcast, you can get your very own copy of this gripping DVD free. You pay only $6.95 for shipping and handling. Go to the phone and call the number on your screen. Don't miss out on this special offer. If you've been encouraged by today's message and would like to know more of what God's Word says to you today, Amazing Facts invites you to visit our educational website at www.bibleuniverse.com. At Bible Universe, you'll discover exciting truths that will fill you with peace and purpose. The mysteries of the Bible will unfold for you at your own pace. Visit www.bibleuniverse.com today. Expand your universe. Amazing Facts Ministry has been broadcasting the gospel since 1966 when it aired its first radio program in Baltimore, Maryland. Elder Joe Cruz was the speaker director for more than 30 years. At that time, no one dreamed that Amazing Facts would become a multifaceted worldwide ministry. The heartbeat of the gospel pulsating from this ministry is heard today on radio, television, the internet, the Correspondence Bible School, the publishing ministry, and local and worldwide evangelism. Pastor Doug Batchelor stepped into the leadership of the ministry after Joe Cruz died in 1994. Currently, Amazing Facts is on more than 100 TV stations and 11 satellite and cable networks throughout the United States, Europe, Australia, Central and South America, the Middle East, and Asia. For more information, call 1-800-835-6906. Hi friends, this subject of hell has troubled and confused people for thousands of years. Satan has distorted this teaching to portray God as incredibly cruel and unjust. Yet the Bible teaching regarding the punishment of the wicked demonstrates the justice and the love of God. Our free gift to you today is a study guide that will explain this topic very simply and it's entitled, Is the Devil in Charge of Hell? And we'd like to send it to you absolutely free. Just call the toll-free number on your screen and ask for offer number 119. If you prefer, you can write for the offer at Amazing Facts, Offer 119, P.O. Box 1058, Roseville, California, 95678. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. Until we meet again, remember the encouraging promise of Jesus. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. This is your last chance to take advantage of this week's special free offer. There is no cost or obligation. Just call the toll-free number on your screen and be sure to note the offer number when you make your request. Just pick up the phone and dial 877-232-2871. That's 877-232-2871. The preceding was a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated.